today we're going to finally be making a feature that I've been dreaming up for the last few months now. And it's all based on one simple tool that can be found in most household garages. At the skills park, it's a pretty common sight to see a row of drops ranging in size, which usually take up a good size footprint on the trail. So I thought, why not just combine all these into the same drop? So after giving it some thought, I figured a single telescoping post was going to be the easiest way to bring this concept to light on a bigger scale. And I didn't want just a small, sad amount of adjustment. I wanted to be able to change this thing by a few feet. So with all the plans in my head, let's get to making this thing. First off, we'll need to make a couple posts for this drop. This is my first time making dimensional lumber with the mill instead of just planks. So instead of throwing the ladder on top of the raw material, I made a crude jig so we can control where we place our cuts. This setup worked super well really, but even still, it took a few hours to cut two 9 foot posts. Virtually free lumber, but not the most efficient means of obtaining it. This is the site where we're making our drop, and like always, it needs a good cleaning, but we'll worry about that later. Right now, I want to get the posts in the ground so we can start to eyeball our landing area and how tall we're actually going to make this thing. It's so rocky. He's digging for nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Before dropping these posts in the ground, I wanted to treat the bottoms to prevent bugs and rot. I bought some fence post sealer, but I'm not so sure about this stuff. It's kinda nasty and hard to apply. If you guys have any tricks for sealing fence posts, I'd love it if you left them in the comments. I did this for now, but I'm not sold on this stuff. Instead of using concrete to put these posts in place, I just used crushed gravel. I really didn't feel like having a ton of concrete chunks in the ground because these won't be the only posts that we put in around the property to make features with. A little bit of packing for about every 6 inches of gravel you add makes for a super solid post that's not going anywhere. Now that we have the boring stuff out of the way, let's get to engineering our fancy adjustable drop. So I've had this concept in my head for, I don't know, since fall. It's only like a general overarching concept. so. When I start to get down to the nitty gritty of it, the details of the project are like making themselves apparent and I'm just trying not to, you know, cut off too much of this post because that would be kind of a project killer. I also think too hard about things, so I think I'm just going to cut it and hope for the best. Yeah. I needed to cut off enough so the drop could descend low enough to make the first level easy while leaving enough to make sure it was sturdy when fully raised. I think we found the sweet spot though. The way I've decided to build it is to turn the jack upside down basically with the shaft portion stuck in the ground and having a square frame be the part that moves up and down. To start, I'm making a wooden box to slide tightly over our post. This is where precision is going to be important, because if there's too much slop between this box and the post, it's going to be too sloppy to ride. If it's too tight, it won't move freely up and down the post. I did end up having some clearance issues since I milled the post myself. I knew this was a possibility, and in hindsight, I should have at least bought a post for this portion so it would have a uniform cut, but this worked out fine. It just took a little more elbow grease to get it fitting right. Next, we're making the ratcheting mechanism. I give a lot of thought to this portion because it needs to bear the weight of the drop and the rider using it. Having fewer moving parts means there's less of a chance for something to fail. I settled on using a heavy steel pipe to act as a locking pin. Simple, but effective. To make this functional, we'll cut a groove in the box so as the weight is put on the pin, the whole system will lock into place. And this thing is really starting to come to life. I mean, look at it, it's practically smiling at you. After some extensive product testing, once some weight is added to this thing, it feels rock solid, and I'm super pleased with how this part turned out. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. Nice little proof of concept. Kinda looks like a birdhouse, too. How, uh, how's that bushwhacker going? Your workout for the day. It's a good one. We don't have the bush out yet. James! <laughs> Put your butt into it. Put your butt into it. All right, I'm gonna go back to saw and logs. Please leave me alone. This is awkward. 
So I wanted to share something that happened during this build with some encouragement from Sarah. There's no denying that the tools we use here can be dangerous without proper precaution. Maintaining your full attention while using them will go a long way to keep you safe. You won't see anything squeamish, but just a fair warning, this next part does get a little tense. <laughs> Sir, are you okay? There it is. There it is. Is it okay? <sighs> What'd you do? Oh. What happened? Give me a second. Is it broken? I don't know. That thing spun back and I hit it. I can hold it up. I can move it. I think I just bruised it real quick. Just want to make sure it is just bruised. urgent care right now. Get Sarah an x-ray. Cause she <laughs> I <winched myself laughs> She winched herself. She's sporting the broccoli right now, but <laughs> I think we should have it looked at a little closer than that. This was really no one's fault, just an accident. But we both know that Sarah's very lucky. It could have turned out much worse, but she only suffered some deep tissue bruising. She's definitely super sore, but was back to doing yard work a couple days later. The locking mechanism didn't set all the way on the winch, and Sarah just didn't notice the fact until she was knocked to the ground. I'd hate for anyone else to get hurt trying to replicate anything you see here or any other projects in general. So just be attentive when using these tools so you can end your day shredding laps instead of nursing your wounds with broccoli. Well, Sarah's not broken, just bruised. So we're gonna get her some ice cream to feel better. And a hamburger. And a hamburger. Okay. <laughs> I'm super glad you're okay, Sarah. Now, let's get back to our build. <laughs> hey, it looks good. Well, if maybe, you think it looks good, that's all that matters. Maybe I should go into hair myself. Yeah, screw this stuff, I'm gonna cut hair. <laughs> We'll be using the same winch that tried to wreck my wife Sarah in order to make raising and lowering this thing easier. The strap has seen better days and needs replaced anyway for brush pulling. So this winch is getting mounted to the box with recessed carriage bolts while the strap will get connected to the top of the post in the ground, looping under the box. When the strap is tightened, it'll pull up on the box raising the entire assembly. I've added some spacers inside too to keep the strap from binding while under load. Another amateur pro tip? After cutting any sort of nylon strap or rope, burn the end of it to keep it from fraying. Now that the mechanical parts are rigged into place, it's time to work on the frame of our drop. To make up the length needed to span a full 14 feet, I scabbed some milled planks together. I'm really loving the rough cut finish of these planks, and it really gives it a woodsy vibe. As the drop is raised and lowered, obviously the angle of this platform is going to change. The angle that's most important to me though is making sure that we have a level plane when the drop is raised to its highest setting. As it drops, the contact point on the box will change, so the end of this drop will literally be floating on this main support. But don't worry, the support will be sturdy and bolted into place, and the box itself will keep the drop laterally stiff, like it's its own little sliding rail system. Now, the main hinge is the thing that gave my brain some trouble, as I wanted it to be stable, yet not wear into the wood with the pivot motion over time. So lacking anything like spare ball bearings, I decided to use more piping with even smaller piping in the center that allowed this part to move freely. I cut the inner piping a little long so it could be torqued solid to the post while letting the outer pipe move freely. <laughs> Smooth on that. Boom. With the frame all boxed up, all that's left is the arduous task of cutting and installing the slats to our drop surface. I ended up making this 26 inches wide, a nice breath of fresh air compared to the jank plank. In time, this feature is going to be connected into our jump trail. I played with the approach a bit, but for now I just decided to make it straight on. So I threw another post in the ground and just made a quick run up so we could start playing with this thing. After a ton of blood, sweat, and a few tears, it's finally time to test this thing out. Alright, 
starting at zero. Ground level. Beanie, no. Go get dad. That look good. That look good. Honestly, it's kind of nice figuring out my, like, taking a drop form. Like actually letting yourself fall with the bike. Let's, uh, let's go to level one. Level one. Go crank it. Pull the little thingy tight. Start cranking it. Place. Looks looks great. Slap okay. it. Slap the top of it. Slap it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. How was that? Fine. A little harder of a hit. Come on now, make it bigger. I think he just like cranking the thing. Right. Level uh, two. Okay. It's a pretty good drop. Yeah. Is it five foot? About a five foot. Yeah, because there's six. Well, I mean, if you land down there, it's like six. Okay. Please be careful. <laughs> Holy crap. Gee, how was that? It wasn't bad. Um, definitely need to figure out how to brace for impact a little bit better. <laughs> uh, I'll probably slow down the video, but I did more like one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I landed. Um, but it's a good thing. Like it's seriously kind of like teaching me what I'm doing wrong um, in increments. So it's accomplishing exactly what I wanted it to when I wanted to build this thing. I think I should at least do level three once. Oh God, are so, you serious? So let's uh, crank it up one more time. Oh, no. The last level. I swear, dude. <laughs> We'll touch it to make sure it's stable. Shit. Stable. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Are you stoked? Are you stoked? Oh yes. Okay. That was right in my mouth, bro. <laughs> Are you gonna hit it? Hell no. Okay. I can't even hold on to a handlebar right now. Yeah, that's true. Maybe you watched me try to rake earlier. I it's know. <laughs> it's my good hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to say that this project was an absolute success. I have some improvements to make still, so it won't be the last time you see the adjustable drop. I loved hearing your guys' name suggestions for jank plank, so let me know if you have any for this feature in the comments. So far, I've heard the jaw drop, the pressure drop, and my working name for it was the jack drop. I'd love to hear what you guys have in mind. So if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe for more videos like this and be sure to check out our trail building playlist on my channel if you want to see what we've been up to so far. Thanks for watching today you guys and as always, keep that rubber side down. <laughs>